Welcome to ICA's video channel, taking the message of Jesus Christ to the world. For more information, go to our website at icahk.org. As you can see, I'm also losing my voice after spending five days straight with 50 kids. You know, it's been it's been wonderful to have so many to have all the children running around and uh, and and it's so wonderful to see the the faith that they have in Jesus. You know, because all week we've been teaching them, no matter what life circumstances, God's goodness is there. You know, you just have to look for it. You just have to find it, and it will bring, pull you through. And it's just beautiful to see the, the favor of the kids that says, yes, God is good, you know. If some of you were here in the first service, you would have seen them. So, how are you doing? Good. Oh, well, great. You guys are awake. I'm so happy. So, I'm going to test you now. We are in the last message in the series called flowing stones so what was the first message loving sinners because you know every saint has a past and every sinner has a future so we love the sinners because they we want to bring them the hope of Christ right so that they can have that hope of relationship with God as well and then what was the what was the message that Jacob taught last week Killing giants, right? That Jesus is the David that will kill giants in our lives. So we don't have to, it, isn't it great? It's not you who is going to be facing the giants. It's Jesus in you that will face the giants with you. We don't have to worry because he's there for us. Today, the last message is called Stoning Jesus. And we all go, oh, because we're going to talk about stoning Jesus. Who wants to stone Jesus? You want to stone Jesus? No, I'm so glad to hear that. Okay. Well, you know, today we're going to be talking through the book of John. And John, he's, he has a very, you know, he presents Christ in a very particular way. Who knows what is that? Can you tell me? How does he present Jesus? Do you know? He presents Jesus as God. You know, all throughout the book of John, he began with, you know, in the beginning was the word. And then, in the, and then he ended with, you know, that... Um, that you, you, you have to believe in him so that you may have life. So all through the book, he just keep pounding that point in that Jesus is God who became man. And so our verse today is from John chapter 10, verse 30 to 39. So we have that. Can we have the scripture verses, please? So in verse 30, it says, I and the Father are one. The Jews pick up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you going to stone me? The Jews answered him, It is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy. Can you say blasphemy? Mm. Because you, being a man, made yourself God. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law, I said, you are gods? If he called them gods to whom the word of God came and scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father consecrate and sent into the world, you are blaspheming? Because I said, I am the son of God. If I'm not doing the works of my father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Again, they sought to arrest him, 
but he escaped from their hands. So this is John's record of Jesus declaring himself to be God, okay, and calling on people to believe. And from the beginning, like I said, from the beginning of the Gospel of John, that was the emphasis that John kept writing. In John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. So right from the beginning, John is telling his listeners, Jesus is God. He is part of creation. In fact, remember in Genesis 1, God spoke and creation happened. So he is the word that God spoke that created be, you know, this whole universe, created you and I. And then in the last, in the end of John, the book of John in chapter 20, verse 31, it says, These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Can you say you may have life in his name? See, John is saying Jesus is God and if you want life, you want abundant life, you want, you know, the fullness of life, you must believe in Jesus. You must believe that he is the Messiah. You must believe that he is the Son of Man. In fact, Jesus himself says this in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thieves the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came, what? That they may have life and have it abundantly. Abundant life. That's the promise that Jesus gave. See, eternal life, abundant life, in order to have that, you have to believe in Jesus. It is necessary. And that was the trouble with the people that were there. See, they were, there were two kinds of people at the time that was listening to what Jesus was saying, that he is God. One of those people, they want to stone him. They were the rejectors. They rejected that truth. See, because all they saw was Jesus. He's the man. I know this guy. I know his family. I know where he comes from. How can he, how dare he say that he is God? He's just a man. And they totally, you know, did not see that God, Jesus is God. And that's what John is trying to emphasize that point is, hey guys, Jesus is God. He was there way from the beginning. In fact, he was there in the creation process. You know, and... You know, in John chapter 5, verse 21, it, Jesus said, For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Can you just understand like the enormity of what he just said he said if you hear my word and believe in me guess what and believe in God who sent me will have life you have to believe that Jesus is God right who became man and it says that you know and and it and in verse 25, it says, truly, truly, you know, when God repeats himself, you know he's serious. So you have to listen, right? Verse 25, it says, truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. And those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. 
You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they that bear witness about me. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. You know, oftentimes we read the Bible, you know, we go to Sunday sermon. Yeah, it's great to sit here with my friend and afterwards we're going to go have lunch. We hear about how great God is. Yeah, it's good. But we often, sometimes, we forget Jesus is God. You know, today, I'm, you know, Christian, and this is also the fault of Christians. We try to make it so easy for people to, under, to, to come to Christ. We want to make it so easy for people, you know, to come to church. We, we always tell them, oh, God is your friend. Right? He's your friend. He loves you. He's your, you know, he's your buddy. And you're like, wow, he's my buddy. He's so cool, right? But we forget, hey, he's God. You know, when, and this is the problem with the Pharisees, with the people of the time. The, those people who pick up the stone that want to st stone Jesus. Because all they see in front of them is a man. And Jesus here, he was, he's saying, you guys been reading the scripture and the scripture it's all about me everything it says in the Old Testament it's you know it's prophecies about me it's foreshadowing of me even the rituals and the festivals I was just sharing with the Saturday fellowship even the Passover meal that Jesus has with his disciples in the end where he took the cup and said this is the new covenant in my you know with, in, uh, with God in my blood or when he broke that bread there's a significance it was not just any old cup he raised up any old bread that he took from the table there is a meaning behind each in every action that he did and it was all foreshadowing of him of Jesus that he is the savior he is the messiah he is the one that's going to come to deliver the Israelites, right? He's the one that's going to deliver them from the punishment of sin. It was all in the scriptures. And he said, and I'm standing here and you guys are missing it. You're rejecting, not just me, you're rejecting the one who sent me. They want to flow the stone. Because how dare this man stand there and say that he is God? They want to kill them for blasphemy. And here, you know, in John 10, verse 31 to 33, again, it says the Jews pick up stones again. So it's not the first time. Every time Jesus proclaims his divinity, people want to kill him. They want to stone him. Because no way. He's man who claims to be God, yet we, it's not, that's not true. He, Jesus is God who is man. Now, if you don't get that, that he is God who became man, then you'll never understand the significance of what he did, the necessity of what he did, why Jesus is the only one that can give us life. So we have to understand this. You know, for those first time, I'm so sorry today, the message is a bit tough, okay? It's very technical, but you know, but this is something we have to understand because so oftentimes, if we forget that, we, we become God instead of putting Jesus as God. Okay, so let's continue. And it says in verse 30, okay, in 34, you know, and they want to, they want to stone him because he's a blasphemer. He's, and in the Mosaic law, you stone a blasphemer. Okay, so they, this is my duty as a religious leader, as a, as a believer of Yahweh, right? So in his defense, Jesus quoted Psalm 82. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, You are God's. 
if he call him if he call them God so uh, sorry to whom the word of God came and scripture cannot be broken do you say of him whom the father consecrate and sent into the world you are blaspheming because I said I am the son of God you know where does that come from it comes from Psalms 82 it says here that God has taken his place in the divine council in the midst of the gods he holds judgment so he's the in the council where the judge are seated where they're gonna you know decide make judgment and in verse 2 it says how long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked Sarah give justice to the weak and the fatherless maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute rescue the weak and the needy deliver them from the hand of the wicked they have neither knowledge nor understanding they walk about in darkness all the foundations of the earth are shaken I said you are gods sons of the Most High all of you nevertheless like man you shall die and fall like any prince arise O God judge the earth for you shall inherit all the nations interesting right you are God's pearl so what does that is what is he talking about you know in the Old Testament times judges are referred to sometimes as God's small g okay so and the and it's a foreshadowing you know the fact that God can represent I mean sorry the fact that man can represent God okay and call God's small g God's it's a foreshadowing of Jesus coming as God representing God the Father see he is the embodiment the union of God and man God Jesus as God becoming coming as as a man you know so like I said there were those who reject him they want to flow stones at him and the good news is there are those who receive him they want to enthrone him who are these people let's find out in John chapter 10 continue verse 40 to 42 Jesus went away he went away again across the Jordan to the place where John John the Baptist had been baptizing at first and there he remained and many came to him and they said John did no sign but everything that John said about this man was true and many believe in him there see so it says that Jesus went away across the Jordan to the place where John the Baptist has been baptizing and that place is called Bethany so he went to the place where John began his ministry and that's where John was telling the people about the coming of the Messiah and these people and these people who were there they've heard what John said about the Messiah and now they see Jesus coming they saw what he's done they've heard what he's he did and guess what they received him they understood this is the Messiah this is the one that John was talking about this is God becoming man this is our Savior and guess what and it says here in verse 42 and many believe in him there do you believe do you believe right and what did John what was John's what did how did John you know describe Jesus he says that John the Baptist says that the one who has the bride is the bridegroom he's talking about Christ the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoice greatly at the bridegroom's voice therefore this joy of mine is complete see because Jesus is here and in verse 30 he says that he must increase and I must decrease see if you're going to enthrone Jesus in your life then Christ must increase and you me we must decrease because it's easy to say oh Jesus 
I'm, I influence Jesus in my life. But is he truly the king in your life? Is he truly God in your life? Or, oh, I still need to be in control of this situation. Oh, you know, this happened and I, I need to be on top of it. I cannot release because it's my problem. This is mine. Everything is mine. Sometimes we're like that. You know, before I became a Christian, I, I, I've shared this with, you know, many people. I, I'm a control freak, okay? I'm a control freak. I cannot stand anything that's out of order. As, um, I think as some of you noticed, you know, when that bird fell, I had to come over and put it up. I, <laughs> I have OCD, okay? I, I really, I need to be in control of every situation in my life. In fact, that's why sometimes I, couldn't, I can't sleep because I'm, I'm not, I don't know if I will be able to wake up so I wouldn't go to sleep. You know, that's how bad I was. And I can't tell you the relief and the peace I found once I have Jesus in my life. That I now, I have someone, my God, that I can let go of my problems. That I, can, I don't have to be in control anymore because now I can depend on him. I can't tell you that weight that is, that's lifted off my shoulder. I think some of you might understand what I'm saying. But I can't, you know. So when you say that God, I enthroned Jesus in my life, is he really king in your life over everything that you do everything that you are you can't do you know it's easy to say it's nice to say in fact it's the perfect answer but you have to act it out you know why because people are watching people are watching okay here in galatians 2 20 it says I have been, this is Paul speaking. He said, I have been sacrificed with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So tell your neighbor, Christ lives in me. And if he lives in you, right, then people, then your life should be more and more like Christ. In the life I live, I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God, who loves me and gives himself for me. I do not notify the grace of God, for if righteousness were through the law, then Christ died for no purpose. See, we should have been on that cross. Christ went there for us. But we, when we have Jesus in us, we still died on that cross with Jesus. Our sin, you see, our sin was paid in full on that cross with Christ. So if Jesus is in you now, then you should no longer be acting the same as you were before because you have died with Christ. Now you are a new creation in Jesus. Right? Because, you know, when we say, let heaven come, your will be done, we, you know, our, our, th our uh, focus, our vision is that making earth more like heaven and ma men more like Jesus. Right? If they look, people look at you, are they seeing Jesus? Or are they seeing Irene? Are they seeing Ruth? Are they seeing Jamie? Are they saying, oh my goodness, oh, you know, OMG, did you, Christian? Right? Or are they saying, wow, your God is so great. I can't believe it. You know, I, you know where does that love come from? Right? Where is, how can you make that, how can you be so quick to forgive? 
What gives you that energy? What gave you that power? Is God enthroned in your life? If you receive Jesus, then he should be enthroned, right? Then it should be acted out. Then he should be the one that people see when they see you. Because oftentimes we put Jesus as the king of our eternal life, but we forget to put him in our current life, the life we're living right now every day. We forgot to give him that right to be in charge. So, as receivers of Christ, the life that you live right now, are you giving him control? Not just, oh yeah, this much, you know. No, full control. Now I'm scaring some people. Full control in your life. Because he is your God. He is the king in your king in your kingdom. So often, sometimes we forget when there's a king, there are subjects. We are the subject. We're not the king. Right? Jesus is the king. So is he king over your life? Right? So Christ must increase and we must decrease. You know, even, you know, in the words of Pastor Ed, we must be fading into the background so that when people see us, they will, instead of saying, oh my God, they will say, oh, your God. Because they see God through you. Amen. Oh, the kids are coming down, so I better wrap up because otherwise they'll be talking. <laughs> so, you know, those who are here for the first time, you know, Jesus is God. He was He gave up, you know, his the rights. He gave up his God, you know, that seat in heaven to came down on earth to become man so that he can pay the penalty of death for us. Will you receive him? Will you believe in him? And will you enthroned him in your life? You know, if you do, I want you to just raise your hand and say, yeah, I want, you know, I want to, I kind of forgot. I, I want to enthrone him in my life. If that's you, or this is the first time you've heard of it. Oh, wow. You know, maybe you were one of those who wanted to stone him before. But now, you understood that he is truly God. That he loves you so much, he became man to take on your sin. I want, I want him in my life. That's you, you know, just raise your hand. Don't worry about other people. We I'm just going to pray for you, you know. So let's all stand. I'm going to pray. I don't know about you, but, you know, I'm still in awe the fact that Jesus loves me. Every day. that you know that wow my God the one who created me the one who made me in his image he came and he took on all that ugliness all that bad all my all my badness he took on the punishment that death that should have been mine he died for me 
I don't know about you, but that's enough to make me want to do something good. You know, I mean, there are times, I mean, honestly, throughout this week, there were times when I just want to choke one of those, you know, but just the thought that, wow, God is good. God loves me. I can love them. Right? So if that's, if you are the ones that raise your, that, you know, in your heart you said, yes, Lord, I want to enthrone you. I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this reminder that indeed you are God. Lord, and you deserve all the praise and honor because of who you are. And we're just so thankful that you loved us. You loved us first. That you came to be man, to die on that cross for us, Lord Father. And Lord, thank you for that reminder that when you're in our lives, we must decrease so you increase, Lord Father. That you, we give you that control, Lord Father. We give you that kingship, you know, in our lives, Lord Father. So for those you saw those hands raised up, Lord Father. Lord, I just want to thank you once again for their love and their faith in you, Lord Father, that they willingly give you full control over their lives because you are good. And your goodness and your love and your faithfulness help us to hold on when things go wrong. Help us, you know, help to remind us that everything comes from you. So, Lord, we just want to thank you. Thank you in your most precious name, I pray. And we all say, Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. And we give you all the glory and honor. For we ask all these things in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus.